Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie Designs. This is another thrift to treasure video where I take four items and turn them into something that is more my style for resale, which is usually like farmhouse, rustic, country, French country, I don't know, whatever I'm feeling, that's what we're going for. And if these are the sort of videos you like, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And also I would love it if you could give this video a big thumbs up it really helps um support my channel so today sorry i'm watching the pelicans fly right now i'm on my screen and porch which if you've watched my video the other day i decorated this tree and i was sweating my butt off it was so hot and now it is so cold i'm sure like next week i'll be back in shorts the weather here is just crazy but it's freezing today and the pelicans are out feeding i'll go ahead at the end of this video I'll put in some footage I got yesterday of the pelicans eating and flying around like they are literally like 10 feet that way. So if you hear a big splash, that's what it is. All right, let's get started with today's video. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, I don't know if y'all seen like a scroll with crafting paper. Um, yeah, I've never wanted, done one of those before. And somebody messaged me today and was like, hey, um, how's that scroll coming along? I literally had no clue what she was talking about. Apparently she ordered a scroll back in September when I wasn't busy and told her I would do it and then write it down. So I gotta bring that one to the top of the list and now I gotta figure out how to make the scroll. So we're gonna do it together. I feel like I can do it. I didn't charge her for it yet. So if it's an absolute disaster, then, um, you know, She'll have to find something else, but I, I think we can make it work. I think we can do it. And then I have another customer that wants me to make them a olive branch tree wreath. So she has like the sign with the 10 commandments and then she really wanted an olive branch wreath um, to kind of go with that theme, you know? So I got this grapevine wreath. I always pick these up at the thrift store garage sales because they make really pretty wreaths and i'm going to take these olive branches that you can get from walmart and we're gonna put it all together and i think this will be really pretty i actually am pretty good at making wreaths but it's not something like i normally make and sell usually when people ask for that i send them along to one of my other friends that do the same thing because it's just not something i enjoy doing but i had all the materials to do that i was at her house you know we were looking at the spot and i'm like yeah I can, I'm gonna make you something. We'll do it. And these I got forever ago, not forever ago, a few months ago, and I need to do some with them. So the plan is to paint them white, distress them, bring back some of that tarnished silver. It's like very rainbowy. It's not the good kind of tarnish. This one's like a little bit better. So I don't know. I'm gonna think about it. Maybe I'll paint, I'll leave this one and do a white tray on the inside and this one paint white and do a natural wood tray because you know I love the two-tone look. So we'll figure out as, we'll figure out as we go, as normal. And the last thing I'm gonna do is a custom order. It is a porch sign with welcome on it. It's been a while since I did one of those and I thought it would be something pretty easy for y'all to recreate. So I wanna take y'all along with me while I complete that order. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I was a little ambitious today on the project. So let's start with the easiest one. The first thing I'm gonna do is just cut off all the branches of this little olive branch thing. I got it from Walmart for $3. So once it's all caught up, cut up, I'll be able to see what I have to work with. And I'm just gonna start arranging it around the wreath, just kind of sticking it in. And then once I have everything kind of where I want it, I'm gonna go back with some hot glue and just put it in place. So I cut up two branches and that's what I ended up using. So this wreath ended up only costing me $6 since I only used two branches. Then once it's all glued in place and the glue has dried, you can just go around and move the branches. They, the whole branch is made out of wire so they're easy to move. And then I had a few leaves that fell off so I just went ahead and glued them down where I thought they looked good. So this was a really simple project and it turned out great and I think my customer will absolutely love it.
All right, y'all, watch closely if you want a sign like this because I am never, ever making another one of these. So I'm taking the craft paper roll and I'm adding Mod Podge to the craft paper and then I'm rolling it up. I thought this would be a good way to do it. And I do think it still is, but I was still worried that the Mod Podge may not hold up. So then what I decided to do once the Mod Podge was dry, I went back with hot glue and just glued the bottom edge of it. That way I knew for sure with the Mod Podge and the hot glue that it would stay in place. I'm just doing the top for now because I got to put the letters on and then I'll do the bottom. So this is a really big sign. I think it ended up being 30 by 35. So I already designed it on the computer and pin it, printed it out on the pages. I print one page at a time. And then for the big signs, I just tape the pieces together. This might seem like a lot of work, but once I have the template done and all taped together, I can use it over and over again. So you wanna use painter's tape to tape it and keep it in place because any other paint might pull up the craft paper and you definitely don't want that. So I'm using my carbon paper, like I do all my other signs, and I'm using a pencil and just transferring and tracing the words. Once that is done, I'm going to use my Sharpie paint pen. This is a water-based pen. So they make water-based pens and oil-based pens. The water-based pens is a very matte look. So that's what I want. And then I'm just going to go through and keep tracing everything that I've already put down. I'm going over it with a paint pen. I like to do my long lines first, and then I come back and I fill in. I know this may seem like a long process to some, but I will never ever get like a Cricut or a machine or anything like that. This is the way that I personally like doing my signs and I feel like this is why people come to me because they really want that hand painted look. I was really worried about it rolling it up once I got it on the wall, but I put a string through the top and hung it up on the wall and it actually stayed. So I was excited about that. And now I'm just taking a wrapping paper roll that I had once I finished wrapping presents. It's a perfect time of year to gather these. I'm gonna put that on the bottom and I'm rolling it up on the wall. So just so I can make sure everything's straight and then I'm sticking a paper clip in it so I can bring it back and hot glue it just like I did the other one. And you need a paper clip it in the back, not the front, which I realized once I let it go. Um, so that's how I did that. And now don't tell my husband, but I went in the shop and got some of his one ounce fishing weights. And I'm going to attach that inside the roll on the bottom. I just wanna be sure it doesn't roll up once it's you know hung up in somebody's house i want to know that it's good The customer also ended up purchasing the willow garland from me because it looks so amazing with this piece. You can find this willow garland in my Amazon store in the description below. Now we're gonna be making a wooden base for this tray. I've already painted it white with my paint sprayer and some chalk paint and distressed it. So I'm turning it over and just tracing the outline of this piece onto the wood. And then I'm going to take my jigsaw and just cut it out. Next, I'm gonna use my Waverly antiquing wax and water mixture and just paint it onto this wood. It just gives it like this old aged effect. Now to attach the piece of wood to the tarnished silver tray, I'm just gonna use my staple gun. I'm gonna put two staples in each side and then go back over it with just a little bit of white paint and cover them up and you'll never be able to tell. Now this other tray, y'all, I could not figure out how to get the piece of wood to fit in it correctly. I tried twice, I gave up. I just need to move on with my life. So if y'all have any suggestions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated because I could not figure this one out. Every sign 
that I work on first starts off in the computer. So I have this template, I make them and keep them and use them over and over again. So if you wanted to remake this sign and you don't have like any fancy design programs like I have, I feel like this is something you can print out on your computer easily. You're just going to make the word, the letter, um, for whatever word you want to put the size of a piece of paper and then just print each letter and then you can tape it together if you want or you can um you know just leave it by itself if you want so signs i've done for porches would say like welcome home noel fall like something easy like that so you just make the letter to the size of the page and print it out and you have an easy template to work with and then you want to measure and see how big you want your wood i'm using fencing so if you put it to the size of a piece of paper, you should be able to put two fence boards next to each other and that should be plenty enough space for this. Now I'm using fencing that I got. I get fencing for free when people are tearing down fences. I've made friends with people that do that sort of stuff. So they'll, you know, give me a call whenever they have uh, wood for me. They know I'm the lady that likes the free wood. <laughs> so if you, if this is your business, you definitely want to reach out to fencing companies or whatever. That would be a great way to try to get yourself some free wood. They do not bring it to me. I go pick it up. So it does require a little bit of effort on my end, but you don't know unless you ask. So, um, if you wanted to buy these brand new at the store, I believe they're between three and four dollars for a piece of wood. So not even that expensive if you wanted to go buy this on your own. But I just wanted to go ahead and explain like the process of how I make a sign because I feel like, like I said, this is something anybody could make because you're just um, printing it out on a piece of paper. I've already cut my boards to size. This sign is going to be five feet tall. Now, if you don't want to have a saw, you could leave the fence boards the way that they are. I prefer to cut them. I do not like the dog hair showing because to me, then it just screams fence board. So I always cut mine down to the size that I need. And the weather out here is brutal. It gets super hot. So I'm using really thick fencing boards as uh, to attach the two pieces together. I'm using glue. I'm using my staple gun. You want to secure it as best as you can because the sun will make everything fall apart. Now I'm going to use just regular paint. This is um, an antique white flat paint from Walmart. I believe it's about $13 a gallon. This is what I use to paint most of my signs. The only time I use chalk paint is if I'm going to be distressing a piece, which actually on wood, this is pretty easy to distress. But it's just a pretty like off white color. I don't like bright, bright white. So I really like this antique white paint and it's super cheap. You can't beat it. $13 a gallon. It goes a long way. I can paint a lot of signs with this. Next, I'm attach my template to the wood using tape. And then I'm going to use my carbon paper and just trace it out with a pencil. And this transfers it onto the wood just like I did the other sign earlier in the video. Now for this sign, I'm going to be using oil-based Sharpies. These are the ones I like to use when I'm doing outdoor signs. It makes, it has more of a shine to it, but it's definitely much better for outdoors. It holds up better. I like to use the smaller oil-based Sharpie and get the corners and then I come back with the big one. Now actually these signs take way less time than when I do smaller signs with lots of words, but I can charge more for these. So I find it all kind of evens out. Some stuff you spend more time working on and you charge less. Some times you spend less time working on stuff, but you can charge more for it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project I worked on today. And if you like these kinds of videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.
Thanks for watching and give this video a big